Hey, so I'm quickly going to show how to install and configure local AGI with a very basic setup, all running locally uh, with local AI to provide inference and local recall for RAG. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it ultra simple for now. Um, this is just like a very basic configuration. Uh, so first of all, you need to get the local AGI source code. Uh, it's still early days for development at the moment, so this is how it's distributed. And in the source directory, once you've done a git clone, uh, you should have a bunch of Docker Compose files. Um, there's a base Docker Compose file which uh, will set up services for local AI which will provide the inference, it will host the large language model and image model. Uh, and then we've got one for local recall, which is used for RAG, it will, um, and for like the agent's long-term memory and semantic search, that kind of thing. And then there's local AGI, of course. Um, and okay, and so, you can extend this Docker Compose file. We already have some extensions, like there's one for NVIDIA. Um, yeah. And there's one for Intel presently, which is the one I'm going to use because I have a Intel Arc A7070 with 16 gigabytes, which um, is a bit limited for, for, doing, for doing agents, but it just about works. Um, and probably with a bit more experimentation, I can, I can get it to be a bit more reliable. Um, and okay, and what I've done is I've created a, a local Docker Compose uh, where I've overridden some settings. I've removed the uh, image model because, like, it it takes a long time to to generate these images and they're used for the um, agent avatars. So I've just removed that for the sake of this demo um, and changed a bunch of other settings. Uh, okay, so let's fire it up. So we're going to boot it up um, with the local one. Just run docker compose up. Okay, you can see now it's starting local AI and local recall. Go to our web browser. So my home server is, is Dell 1. Um, you know, currently, it's not started local AGI yet. Let's try local AI. Okay, it's still starting up. So yeah, it takes a while to start local AI. It has to go through all the models, um, check that they're verified their uh, hashes, that sort of thing. If you're doing it for the first time, it has to download the models, um, and they're all pretty big. Even the, the small ones that I'm limited to with my graphics card are still pretty pretty big. Okay, so I think maybe local AI has started. Okay, so now we have local AI's UI, which is on 8081. We can see we've got some models installed here. There's like various things we can do here. So by default, we're going to use the uh, this what this LLM. Not sure how you pronounce it. Archi agent, I guess. And um, this is quite quite a small and limited model, but um, we can ask it to do basic stuff. So if type in hello. Go to the log. We can see that Yammer C++ is loading now. Okay. Hello, how can I assist you today? Okay, so that's working. Let's see if local AGI has started. Yes, here it is. Okay, so this is the local AGI dashboard. Um, you can see we've already got one agent there. Let's go and delete that actually. Delete that for now. And then let's create a new agent. So just call this uh, how. Uh, 
give it an identity. Uh, I won't get into many of the other settings right now. Let's just create that agent. So I've created that agent now. Um, if we go back to the list, we can chat with this agent inside uh, local AGI. Hello, how can I assist you today? Okay. Obviously, it didn't get the uh, angry that it's supposed to be angry. But again, this is quite a limited uh, model. Um, okay, so next. So, I mean, yeah, we can chat with it in this UI, uh, but this is not usually the way you'd uh, interact with your agents. Like, um, you'd interact with your agents through um, an existing application. Uh, like, I have IRC running on my home server, so I can configure it to connect to IRC. Um, Okay, nickname, I'll tell it to join a channel called bot, and we'll tell it to always reply, which means um, we don't have to type its name for it to respond. Okay, so now that's configured, let's go and look at our IRC. Okay, we can see that Hal has joined. Say hello, Hal. Yeah, it's very consistent. How can I assist you to Dell? Um, let's, let's ask it to do something like, what is the weather like in Mumbai? Complete with typo. I'm sorry, but as an AI, I don't have real-time access to current events and weather. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it can't do that at the moment. It can't access the internet. Um, but we can fix that. We can go to the Actions tab. We can add a search action. Just tell it to get one search result because, again, um, dealing with quite a limited model. OK. So now it's configured and it's restarted. But he hasn't said that he's restarted. Okay, let's ask it again. Hello. Uh, like in Mumbai. Okay, so now it's thinking about it. Um, it has to decide what tool to call and then call it and look up the result. And okay, it's. Um, it's managed to get two URLs apparently. It says the weather is from 23 degrees to 38 degrees. Uh, it's given us some URLs to look at if we don't believe it. Which Mumbai? Okay. It says it's 30 degrees, which is warmer than here. Great. So it can it can do something. And yeah, so again, this model is quite limited. So I mean, we've got lots of actions here which we could add, but it's going to struggle with a lot of these. Um, and some of these actions have like more settings. So yeah, SSH commands, we have to put in a bunch of details and then it can connect to an SSH server and run arbitrary shell commands. You know, if you're feeling brave enough to give your agent that power at the moment. Uh, I've got M MCP server, so you can plug whatever tools MCP server provides. Um, yeah, out of the connectors, we have a lot more than IRC. Um, probably the best developed connector so far is Slack, which is not local, so that's not good, but it's just what we happen to use to communicate internally. So in Slack, the agent will understand how to do, you know, how to handle threads and stuff like that. Um, IRC is way more basic. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch more there. Memory settings, uh, we can enable the knowledge base and long-term memory. 
Um, so once we once we do that, so now that it's restarted, it'll actually uh, update um, its memory with messages you sent it. Um, and when when you when it receives a new message, it will do do a search to see whether there's something in its memory banks that that will match that search. Which I'm not going to demonstrate that for now because um, <laughs> again, like dealing with quite a basic model, so I'll probably just exhaust its context. Um, and yeah, usual stuff. System prompt. Um, we actually have also dynamic prompts, which okay, and a bunch more features and settings. Um, and hopefully, over time, we'll remove these settings or get an AI assistant to help you configure this stuff because there's a lot of things to set here, and clearly, that's like it makes it a bit too expert, and that's not what we generally want. So um, that's it. Uh, this video will not age well because it's still under heavy development um, and expect more to come. Uh, as we release new features, we'll try to uh, keep some demonstrations coming. Thank you.